thank you for joining Carrie Rios and myself, Amber Tripp, as we adventure into our very first podcast series for Clark College Community and Continuing Education. We really wanted to celebrate our instructors and kind of pick their brains as to who they are and what they teach so that the community at large has a better idea what Clark College CCE actually has to offer. And I'm going to tell you, after doing a bunch of these podcasts, there are some amazing and interesting and fantastic little tidbits you pick up from every single class so you're gonna want to enroll in in anything that fits your fancy or you think you might want to have an interest in just seriously just jump the gun and just do it just do it um so without further ado i would love pam or if you i don't know if you prefer pam or pamela but introduce yourself with your name and uh, the class you teach at clark college cce well, I am uh, Pamela C. Johnson, and people are welcome to call me Pam or Pamela. And I'm a mixed media um, artist uh, living here in Vancouver. And I am offering mixed media collage at Clark again. I uh, started teaching and, at Clark in the before times and, uh, and mixed media collage and was really enjoying seeing students come in of all abilities because the art form that I like to teach is super beginner friendly. Awesome. I love that because beginner artist right here. (laughs) I mean, I have a lot of ideas in my head, but putting it out there, whoo, beginner. So what inspired you to actually teach this class in particular? Is there a, is there an inspirational story behind that? Are you just kind of, this is the best for beginners or what kind of drove you to this? Well, um, for me, mixed media collage is exactly where my interest in art began. And uh, I tell people that I went to art school at my kitchen table. (laughs) <laughs> and I just started doing a mixed media collage, which by the way, to show your viewers an example, I'll just hold one up for now. Mixed media collage is the combining of various mediums and collage with paper and creating Very interesting cool. um, compositions. And I'm a wordy woman, so I often put words um, on uh-huh. my art, but it's a very easy, relaxing, inexpensive art form that allows for creative expression. And, and for me, that resonated a lot when I started to make art as a working mom, you know, about 15 years ago. And uh, and as I began to invite my friends to my home, you know, come over Friday night and art it up with me. And we'd sit around my kitchen table and I'd have all the things. And pretty soon I began to realize that I had a knack for that. And I enjoyed uh, giving other people the opportunity to express themselves through creativity in a way that was not intimidating and in a way that was accessible and not super time consuming or high um, sophisticated technique. And so now I find there's a, a great audience here in the Vancouver area who are, who remind me of myself 15 years ago, awesome. who I want to step into creative expression and, uh, and come into the classroom. And it's not intimidating. It's a very forgiving art form and okay. unique art form that allows people to, uh, I really uh, help people tap into their creative intuition when making this art form. And the wonderful surprise I've had, I have to tell you this, is uh, beginner friendly, but I've been surprised that there have been accomplished artists who've also joined my classes in the past at Clark, my mixed media collage. And I discovered that sometimes accomplished artists who have that high level of technique want to discover ways to loosen up. And this art form is very loose, meaning that it's not super formulaic, that you, you go with the flow. So I've enjoyed beginner students as well as accomplished artists coming into my classes. And it's just a great art form that creates camaraderie right away. That's awesome. And we were saying, er, I think yesterday, I don't remember earlier in our podcast that uh, the best, the true master is the one that's always learning as a student. So um, that's awesome that you have from beginner to, you know, the advanced artists in your class and they're all learning at their level. And that that's awesome. I love yeah. that. And, and that you came from KC University, which is kinder, kinder oh. <laughs> University. So anybody can literally come from the Kitchen Counter University too. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. I mean, it's you. we make art in the environment we find ourselves in. And human beings, we have an innate desire to leave our mark on the earth. And to this day, you know, we, we celebrate cave markings. That was the first art school, right? So yeah. we make art wherever we find ourselves, whatever our environment is. And for me, it was my kitchen table for a long time. Very cool. I love that. Uh, and <laughs> I've been to those, some of those those cave art painting things in France. They, they're awesome. Oh, I mean, uh, all it took was a little bit of paste from whatever 
mineral deposit they found and some probably some spit or something i don't know i don't even know how they made it but it's cool it's cool that art spans the generations and the and time really it, it spans time and it starts with storytelling and and it sounds like what you are creating or what you're helping others create is really a story within themselves you know i'm glad you brought that up because i say that all the time that all art tells a story and uh and for me in particular because i like to add words to, to art and I like to um, inspire students to consider adding meaningful words to their art. So in that way you're showcasing uh, colors and patterns that uh, that you like but also words that are meaningful. So for example I have this practice every year that instead of having a New Year's resolution I have a word of the year and, awesome. um, and I'm going to toggle my camera if I may. I want to show you this. Is that okay? I would love that. So this past year my word for 2021 and all the things we're doing is the word emerge. And so uh, this class, which I didn't teach at Clark, but this is a wonderful example of mixed media collage showcasing a meaningful word in my life. The word that I happen to choose as my anchor word for 2021, emerge, which means to manifest from obscurity. Wow. <laughs> I love that definition. And so so every class I teach at Clark, I um, I guide students in considering if there's words or quotes they want to put on their mixed media collage and i show techniques of how to do that and that can become uh, more meaningful for the student the art has greater meaning and connection and tells that story um, i have sold many mixed media collages where the patron would say the art the colors were amazing but when i read your words like i recently sold a piece that said um beautiful are my scars you know, and a woman who bought it as a breast cancer survivor. So oh, she, awesome. I, I literally have goosebumps running a bit down my back right now. That is amazing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Carrie Shaw. Well, you know, because art does tell a story and it's connecting with yourself first. So as the art maker, and I refer to my students as art makers, I find that that language is less intimidating. When I use the word artist, many students will kind of shrink back like, no, I'm not an artist. But if I say, hey, we're art makers, everyone's kind of like, yeah. I'm an art maker, you know, so it just yeah. <laughs> helps people's creative confidence kind of uh, elevate a little bit. And uh, and that, you know, as the art maker, we need to inspire ourselves first before anybody else, whether we're intending to give the art away or sell the art or keep it for ourselves. And so in that way, um, and I learned from one of my mentors, when we make art to listen, you know, we're not just viewing the art, but we're listening and what do, what do we as the art maker hear? What is the story we hear? And often as we know, art is a mirror of the art maker. And absolutely, people who are close to me will recognize my story that comes through in my art. There's a reason I made art that said, beautiful are my scars, right? That reveals something about my own story. And we all universally share the same struggles. And so I find that that little bit of vulnerability in art making and letting some of our own story come through with words and color and pattern can be very, very meaningful and even healing for the art maker, for the student. Because telling your story, Maya Angelou, I love this quote. She said, there is no greater agony than an untold story. Wow. Yeah. And, and, art and Maya Angelou, I mean, one of the best women in history, I, I feel like. I mean, that's just speaking my opinion, but absolutely. So I, I am curious, have you always been an art maker? Good job. You know what? That's a great question because I, I know I'm 57 and I look back through my history and there were some foreshadowing as I was growing up, but I'm not that person who my whole life have been obsessed with art. I'm kind of a late comer to the art party. And I started making art at my kitchen table as a means of uh, just relaxation and a, a, a nice little hobby uh, about 15 years ago. So that was in my 40s. And uh, mostly though, I would say I have exhibited being a writer, which makes sense that words appear in my art because I have been a writer my entire life. You know, I was that kid in school who banged out the essay with, you know, little effort. So words uh, are, are a big part of my art making, no matter what kind of art I'm making, it's almost always words will appear. Very cool. And, and it's it's such an abstract art, too, but it's so fulfilling when you look at it. I mean, there's all these details and, and things coming into focus. And, and, and like you said, the story behind it. Now, I heard 
that you could give us a small 30 second demonstration. Yes, I set up some things. So I'm gonna carefully toggle my camera back and hit the right little button. And whoop, there we go. Let me get that down so you can see it pretty good. All right, so this is, you see that okay? Absolutely. All right, so this is a collage that's actually pretty much done. And there's paint and paper and other techniques I use uh, to create this weathered look that has a kaleidoscope of color and pattern. And there's all kinds of things we can do to enhance that. So I have this little stencil here and, and I, without thinking about it too much, you know, here's a good spot. And I've got some orange paint because orange and blue play really nicely. And I'm being a little bit random, but I pull that up and it just adds that nice little bit of color. And if I wanted a little bit on the butterfly, I could turn the stencil over and just kind of smudge the butterfly. And it's oh, a wow. little bit, but that little detail, I tell my yeah. students all the time, a little can be a lot. It's very much like cooking where just a pinch yeah. of salt can make the difference. And then I have over here a piece of collage. Let's see if you can read that. Will it focus on I cannot on? read that. It's not going to focus for me, but it says um, the words say, be brave with your life. And then I've already made this little mini collage. I put that paper on here. You can see I already did a little bit of stenciling. And then I could decide, you know, do I want that here? Do I want it over here? And just wherever I want to put it and I'll glue that down. And then this becomes, you know, a little bit more interesting art right here. It's very interesting, but now I have this sentiment, be brave with your life. And we all know a butterfly is a wonderful example of transformation. Oh, and absolutely. Then, yeah, there you go. So those are the things that students will learn in my mixed media collage class. And the class I'm teaching this fall, um, I'm really excited because this is this is a small collage. This is a nine by 12. But when students come to my class this fall, we're going to work for four weeks on a 16 by 20 collage so every week students will come to class and I will guide them step by step but it will be one big project so um, and my goal for students is to finish their 16 by 20 um, mixed media collage by the end of the course wow and so we really get to know each other and encourage each other the last time I taught this class in the before times it was a great class it was very full and um, I like to play music during class and the students welcomed that and at one point the song came on um, lean on me and the entire class started singing together as we were making art together so it became a little community for those four weeks and uh, so, and friendships were born and I'm with me and between each other so I really welcome the opportunity to bring this art form uh, to people in Vancouver through Clark community. So looking forward to October, looking forward to getting my class going, That's getting, awesome. back in, getting back in the classroom. And I'll be at the uh, Columbia Tech campus, which has this nice. wonderful, spacious uh, studio classroom with giant windows. It's my favorite classroom to teach at um, on the Clark campuses. So. See, a couple of little known things that maybe the community doesn't know, but there are some great spaces over there at the east side location of Clark. And, and easy parking. Super easy park and free. Super. free parking, free and easy. Free, easy parking. One building. You just have to find one building. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. And you can see it from the main road, too, which is even better. Um, yeah. So you touch on something that I think um, a lot of people may or may not know, but what happens when people take these classes, these uh, continuing education classes, is that the the real joy and the real thing that comes out of it are these friendships and these um, yes. camaraderies that are built and made and these rela relationships between students and the instructors, but a lot of times the students themselves who create these bonds in the class. Oh. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. That last class I taught, um, I keep calling it the before times, there was a number of students who uh, brought them, who created their own cohort. I mean, they would say to each other, who wants to keep making art together beyond this class? Who wants to stay connected? And they were passing around their own email list uh, with each other. So it was, you know, these, these classes in ECD bring like-minded people together who have similar interests. And then especially if it's a series of classes in a course, like mine is a four week series, then you get to know your neighbor, you know, over the next four weeks. And it's, I love being a witness to that. You know, I love that I get to play a role 
in facilitating those kind of connections because art making is often a solitary practice. So making art together in community is a different, the, the creative energy, we fuel each other and inspire each other. And also um, we are in this pandemic, which we all know has caused tremendous isolation. And so coming together, being safe, wearing our masks and able to have connection and not, you know, there's lots of things that we're having to modify our behaviors on, but we can safely return to campus and make art together and have these shared experiences that for me, I've witnessed it in many of my students' lives and I get to experience it all the time, but it adds a more fulfilling life experience, in my opinion, of sharing these things together instead of in isolation. I love that. And that, and it, that's kind of been a common theme throughout this whole podcast series is the energy mm -hmm that uh, you get when you build these uh, relationships and you come together in one in solidarity basically in one class and you're all there for the same reason uh, maybe you have a different story that you bring to the table but you're all there for that for that class and for that getting together on that commonality of, of what you're learning so I, I love that that there's going to be some energy created and and hopefully some really great friendships formed that's been my experience and the the other thing too that I um, I really love to create an environment for students that is it, that is very that feels very safe and secure and supportive. We all do that as instructors um, because I recognize you know I'm a middle-aged woman and a lot of my students who come are mid-aged or retired, and it is not uncommon uh, to have a student come to Clark who has not been in the classroom in a really long time who has uh, never taken a community college class or hasn't taken an art class for a really long time. And I recognize, I've been in those shoes and I recognize the act of faith. And for many students, it's an act of courage. They've gone through the steps, they've chosen to make this commitment to themselves. And I love creating an environment that affirms a student who's made that step of faith. And I have had students talk with me and tell me how um, coming out of their shell, coming out of isolation, and this was before the pandemic, but a lot of people are lonely and live isolated lives, especially after they've retired and coming out of their shell and coming in the classroom and meeting other people and making art can actually boost their mood. Um, I've seen students get relief from depression and anxiety and I feel incredibly honored that I get to play a role in that healing process in other people's lives. I mean, that is, that's a reward that ha that is, that's why, that's a big thing that's that so fuels bad. me to do what I do. Yeah. Because when, uh, when a woman, especially, especially um, the aging woman, a lot of us come from that generation where women, our voice is devalued and dimmed and art making and creativity is a celebration of your voice and an yeah. activation of what you have to express. It's self-expression. So I absolutely recognize the student who struggles uh, because she's struggling with her own self, her own yeah. voice, her own power. And we have seen, it's well documented that art um, empowers the artist, the art maker. Uh, yeah. When the art maker is able to have that freedom to make what they want to make. Yeah. And so I love facilitating that. And I appreciate the opportunity at Clark uh, to have that to have that interaction with people right here in my community and and then it's also cool to see students who gain such confidence that uh, I was in a gallery in Camus and what there's some art on the wall in this gallery in Camus excuse me and is one of my former students and I was just like Heck awesome. yeah so I feel like a proud art mama you know yeah. so I also enjoy you know there's all the healing stuff and that stuff is really valuable to me but there's also you know just the 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 technique of art making and the skill of art making and creativity and I absolutely love watching people grow and grow in their confidence and put their art out in public and not just keep it private which is fine but it's really, really cool to be a part of a student's growth that they're now putting their art out in a public space. Yeah, super that's cool. Beautiful. beautiful and rewarding. <laughs> yes. Rewarding. Yeah. So my question to you is, if there's somebody on the fence uh, to take the class, what would you say to them to get over that fence, whether it's fear-based or uh, pride-based or whatever it is, you know, I don't know if I can do it kind of thing. What, what, what would you say to get them over the fence? But um, it's it's kind of my philosophy about life, which is um, if you don't do it, 
well, there's your answer. You know, you didn't do it, so you don't get to know. You'll never know. But if you make the leap of faith, you just might discover something that is really cool for yourself that uh, brings some excitement and some color, literal color and um, emotional color to your world and meet some really cool people. And you won't know unless you try. And it's and the course is inexpensive. The supplies are inexpensive. It, the barriers are very, very little teeny tiny, hardly any barriers to come to a class like this. So you don't know unless you try. It's like a new food. You don't know unless you try. And you might have missed out on how amazing Brussels sprouts are. I thought Brussels sprouts were awful till I figured out I just needed to learn how to cook them. Now yeah, I'm a lover. Add, now add I'm, bacon. <laughs> and what, right, right, exactly, add bacon. So bacon I, that's bacon how I feel. Strip. <laughs> <laughs> so coming to a class like this is very supportive for beginners as well as the seasoned art maker who just is, is bored or wants to loosen up. I am very well known in the community as an artist and art maker who has a very loose style, meaning that it's very going with the flow and, and it, this is not an art form that requires precision, but it requires just going with the flow and allowing yourself to trust your own creative intuition That's and it's awesome. been my experience over and over and over again that every student who comes doesn't regret it does not i've yet to be aware of a student who's like man that was a waste of time so it's an <laughs> investment in yourself so i especially love brand new students who feel nervous about taking a class of any kind uh, i we're here clark is very supportive i am very very supportive it's a trademark of my classroom is that i'm create a very supportive environment for the Good. never taken art class. I had a student not long ago, 70 years old. She hasn't been in an art classroom since she was in high school. That's and, awesome. And yeah. it just, so you just be it's like, you just be like yep. you, be you, be you yep. as an art maker. Awesome. Well, I need to wrap this up. Um, so I just want to thank you again, Pam, for joining us today. You've been so insightful and just so giving of your spirit and your time. And I really appreciate that. Um, if you want to take this class, it is called uh, Mixed Media Collage. It's under the art section online at cce.clark.edu. You can also call if you don't want to go online. Just call 360 992 2939 someone will help you register if you want up-to-date information it's all online the who the what the where the when the cost everything um so just check it out there's a supply list online that you, if you're going to take the class just uh, need to know um but we hope to see you just click and roll and pam thank you again so much for your time and your beautiful inspiration thank you and uh last word for potential students if there's a supply you can't find on the supply list do not let that stop you i am a generous art instructor and bring lots of extra supplies so come come with what you got we'll make it work there you go you heard it from pam um so enroll now and uh we'll catch you on the flip side